This is a Land Rover Discovery Sport, but I reviewed it a couple of years ago, so I don't really know what I'm doing with it now. I wonder if it's like a newer version, I just can't tell. I know how to find out. I've got a brand new CarWow app, and what I can do with this is actually use the camera to read the registration of the car, and it'll bring up exactly what car it is, and it says, yes, it very much is a Land Rover Discovery Sport SE model, 2020 version so it is the brand new car it even gives me the deals on the car that's available you can look at offers on used versions leasing all kinds of stuff you can just compare everything on this app if you want to as well as look through different reviews and watch videos best thing about it is it's completely free and you can get it now for your phone if you want from the google play store or the apple app store in fact click on the pop out banner up there to go download the app or Follow the link below the video. However, seeing as this is new, it doesn't mean that I've now got to review it, which means more work than I planned today. Ah. Right, and let's start this review by talking about the Discovery Sports design, because at the beginning, I was just playing with you. Of course, I knew this was the facelifted car because I'm a professional motoring journalist. For instance, I can tell you that Land Rover has given this car a new rear bumper. They've also given it LED tail lights down the sides. It's largely the same apart from some new alloy wheel designs. It's got that rear kick as well. At the front, it is a bit more distinctive. They've given it the face of the new Discovery, which is a bit like the Evoque as well, with a wider grille, make it look a little bit more chunky and sleeker headlights and a new front bumper design as well. I do think it looks better. Now, in terms of pricing, it starts from £31,500, that you can save an average of two grand off one from Carway. And you'll be able to see that if you check the app. Just go do it, come on. It's enough of that sales kind of pitch, sorry. But it's worth it, just go check it out. When you first climb into the new Discovery Sport, you think, wait a minute, it's rather similar to the old one. But that's not really a bad thing because the design is quite clean, quite simple. But then you do realize that things are new. This whole area is new. This bit's new. That's new. The steering wheel's new. Quality wise, leather out on the dash, quite nice. Though it is a little bit flimsy behind there. That's squidgy on there. This is all right to the touch and that. Feels a bit cheap there. Do you know what? It's pretty blooming good, actually. It's not quite as robust feeling as the interior in a BMW X3, but it's still easily good enough, and it's even squidgy down here. Oh, look, that's nice. And wait, let me do this. The centre console wobble test. That feels sturdy. Anyway, let's talk about specs. As standard, all Discovery Sports get a 10-inch infotainment screen. There's also keyless start. Look, there's the key. Well, I'm just starting it without having to turn a key. That's so like modern. Actually, this has been available for years. Finally, all Discovery Sports also get front and rear parking sensors plus a reversing camera. If you move up to the S model, then you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard. Otherwise, Land Rover will charge you 200 pounds for them. Also, your infotainment system now comes with built-in navigation and heated door mirrors, which oh, is great on a day like today. Actually, <laughs> it is really quite nice and warm. And they fold as well, look. Though they hardly fold in very far, so it seems sort of pointless. The S also gets heated front seats and they have 12-way electrical adjustment and full leather. Hmm. Though if you don't like dead animal, you can have a vegan-friendly interior. Move up to the SE model and then you get a full digital driver's display rather than just analog dials with a weird digital screen between them. You also get premium LED headlights and scrolling indicators just like on an Audi. And then there's the lazy person's favorite, a powered tailgate, yes. I don't know what that voice is all about. The top of the range car is the HSC and that gets 20 inch alloys as standard. You also get a Meridian sound system and adaptive cruise control. Now, as I'll illustrate now with these cutaways, as you move up the range from the entry level car to the HSC, the car does look better inside and out with just some nicer bits of trim. Also, you can get an R Dynamic pack, which makes it look more sporty yet again, inside and out with some more sporty trims. The choice is yours. Anyway, let's continue the review by talking about the infotainment system. Now, the things I like are the graphics, nice and sharp. It's got a nice screen as well. The colors are good. What I don't like so much is the fact that the 
The shortcut buttons along the bottom are a bit hard to press when you're driving along. You can swipe like that and that's pretty easy to do, but you might notice it's a bit laggy, this screen. You really notice it on the sat-nav. It's like some ancient smartphone. That's really quite bad, that is. Also, the satellite navigation system is only okay. It's not the best at taking you around jams and stuff like that. But what you're going to do is just use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and Google Maps or Waze to actually have better mapping. Moving on to the digital dials, they're all right. I like them actually. They're clear, you can see what's going on. You can control various functions using these buttons on the steering wheel, but I'm not so keen on these because you can press them to increase the volume. You can actually reduce it by sliding it, but you're never sure because it's not that responsive and it just drives you mad. It's just, ah! Just do it one way or the other or do it properly. Also, some of the menus on the digital driver's display can be a little bit awkward. It's not as logical to use as that in an Audi Q5. And if you click on the pop-out banner, up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of that car. Now, what I do prefer on this compared to the very latest Audis is the controls for the dual zone climate control. So dual zone climate control is standard on every Discovery Sport. And I like the way you have the numbers in the dials, but it's dead easy to switch between the temperature and the fan because you just press an actual physical button. Also the drive mode button, it's a physical button, so it's dead easy to hit when you're driving along as well. Look, and then you control it using the other dial. Dead simple, like that feature a lot. In terms of connectivity, it's quite a bit. Look, in here, you have your USB. We've got wireless charging for your mobile phone down there. In here, you've got two USBs. There's a 12 volt charging socket as well. And that brings me neatly on to the practicality. Land Rover's increased, there could be spaces in this car, and apparently there's 48 litres of space. In the pre-facelift version, there was still plenty of room, but even better here. So you've got two cup holders here, because they are varying depth. So that's the shallow one for the really small cup. This is a medium-sized cup. And then there's a deep one for the grand lattes there. And it really does grip the cup. That is good. I also like this feature. If you're ashamed of your cup holders, you can hide them with this tray. Oh yes, I don't need to look at those horrible cup holders now. And if you want, you can actually do this. Remove this section entirely. So you've got a huge bin there, which I suppose you could put a handbag in there if you had a handbag. Yeah. Then the door bins, massive. I mean, absolutely blooming massive. That's my class there, fits easily. And it's rubberized at the bottom so things don't really rattle. The glove box, it's an all right size. There used to be an extra little space there, but they filled it in for this latest version of the car, but you don't really need it because it was always a bit pointless anyway. In terms of getting comfy behind the wheel, or to the steering wheel in every direction, there's quite a lot of movement in it and there's a lot of movement in the driver's seat as well. You're gonna be able to get comfy whether you're big or small. Importantly, you can really jack it up quite high. So if you are indeed small, you can get a decent view over the bonnet still. So actually, now I feel like I'm in a proper Land Rover Discovery, not just the Sport, it's that high. Anyway, let's check out the back seats. This is a very comfy car here in the back. So I like the fact that you can slide the seats, you can recline them. Lots of room as well. Look, headroom good, knee room good, foot space good. And if you need to carry three at once, then the middle seat isn't too bad. There's not too much of a big hump in the floor like in some other SUVs. You can get away with it and the body is wide enough to cope with three in the middle row at once. So I'm more than happy back here and there's a few useful features. I like the expensive feeling pockets on the back of the front seats. The fact that you've got huge rear door bins, not quite as big as the front, but they are big. And you've got a little bit of extra storage there, which seems pretty pointless. So I don't know why I mentioned it really. You've got a 12 volt socket there as well for charging mobile devices. And if you fold this down, there's your armrest. Pointless little storage space there, two cup holders, which is less pointless. And if you need to carry longer items, of course, look at this. You can fold this down and carry things through there and two people either side. If you want to, you can fit a baby seat in the back, very easy, just flip off. Ah, it always hurts when you do that. Oh, there you go. I much prefer the fold-up ones, or the ones that you just like push through the seat base sometimes, because that really hurts, but once they're exposed, the Isofix anchor points are easy to mount a seat to, and you can even fit a huge rear-facing seat in here, no problem at all, without having to move the front passenger seat forward. And you can fit two child seats in here, and there's enough room for an adult in between them to keep them bloody quiet. Children will actually like this big rear windows, you get a good view out that they're probably just going to be looking at their iPads anyway. Now, when I was a kid, I used to like to have the windows down in the back, but in this car, they don't go very low. That's it. That's all you get. 
which is a bit rubbish. Enough of that, I want to show you something else. This cart can carry seven people at once, and it's quite easy to get into the back row. And just do that, clamber in. Oh look, I found a poppy. Means I don't need to give to charity. I can just wear this and pretend I've done my bit. No, I'm not going to do that. I will give, don't worry guys, I'm only joking. Ow! This is the problem, headroom's rubbish. This is just for children. I don't know where my feet are going to go. Knee room's just about all right. It's the foot space, it's just terrible. And look how low I'm sitting. It's like I'm just sat on the floor. It's definitely nowhere near as comfortable back here as in the very rear of a Hyundai Santa Fe. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of that car, though some people just won't accept a Hyundai in replacement for a Land Rover. What else we've got back here? Yeah, a couple of cup holders. And there's a 12 volt socket there so they can charge their devices to stop them complaining about the fact that they feel like they're being tortured. Yeah, it's an occasional seven seat of this. Anyway, I don't want to be in here any longer. I'm going to get out. One eternity later. Let's move on to the boot. When you have this car in seven seater mode, the actual capacity is pretty rubbish. Look at this. Terrible small boot, really, with all seven seats in place. And then try to fold down the rear seat. You can do it. However, if the person who's been sat in the middle row has reclined their chair like that, and then you try and do it, it won't work. So you don't have to do that, which is a little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. However, with the seats folded down, look at that. Loads and loads of room. It's quite practical as well with various tie down points. The odd net here, some strappage going on there. You don't have much space in there because basically it's your tire repair kit though if you want to you can pay extra and get a full-sized spare wheel you can fold down the middle row just at the touch of a button so here it is go and the other one but it's almost pointless because yet again you have to go round to lock them into place it's not a completely flat floor either as you can see there's a hole there and it is kicked up slightly but it's all right you will be able to slide things into the boot but it would be better if it was completely flat and that brings me on to five annoying things about the Land Rover Discovery Sport. If you want USB ports in the back of this car which of course you do Land Rover are going to charge you £200 for them which is a bit crap on a car which costs this much. If you've got the rear seats in place there's absolutely nowhere to leave the low cover so I'm just going to have to leave it there. Why the heck are the gear selector paddles for the automatic gearbox oh I remember only the R dynamic version gets them so if you want to change manually in this car you have to tug on your knob I've noticed that when the roads a bit dirty and you've got bad weather you tend to get these weird like streaky lines on the bonnet it must be something to do with the way the air flows over it you're gonna be forever cleaning this stuff off because it just looks horrible do you like a nice, smooth, powerful six-cylinder engine? Mm. Well, you've come to the wrong place with the Discovery Sport because you can only get it with four-cylinder engines. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. Underneath here is a pedestrian airbag, so if this car does hit someone, they don't end up uh, in their head of the hard engine bits underneath. Got annoying people in the back seat kind of blocking your view so you can't see behind don't worry the optional clear sight rear view mirror relays a camera feed from the back to the mirror screen look at that now we've got a digital display i can see exactly what's going on brilliant bugger off another cool camera related feature is the ground view so it uses the feed from the camera in front and effectively fills it in as you pass over the ground so you can effectively see underneath the car. There is the parcel shelf. I don't want to run over that, even though I can't fit in the floor. Now it's reading the road ahead and it's filling it in. So look, you can see the parcel shelf passing underneath the vehicle. Yeah, that's really handy when you're off-roading or if you're kind of trying to park in tricky spaces or drive over curbs or that kind of stuff. This Land Rover Discovery Sport will basically kick the ass of anything similar from Germany when it comes to off-roading. It's got a better four-wheel drive system as well and a wading depth of 60 centimetres. That is really, really crucial on the school run. 
The new Discovery Sports fuel tank is 20% bigger than before. It's now got 67 litres, which means that you don't have to stop so much at the fuel station. Also, you can now get it with mild hybrid technology on most engines, which also helps boost the fuel economy. Brilliant. Now, let me explain the engine choices to you. So it's sort of simple. You can get a two litre diesel engine with three different power outputs. There's a 150 horsepower, there's a 180 horsepower and a 240 horsepower version. The 150 horsepower engine is available with front wheel drive only, but that just gets a manual gearbox. Every other Discovery Sport has an automatic gearbox with eight speeds and four wheel drive. There's also two petrol versions, yet again a two litre engine, and they have 200 horsepower or 250 horsepower. Now this is a D180 SE four wheel drive auto. It costs £43,000, but I've plugged the details into the car wag configurator and got an offer back for £40,000, so a saving of three grand. Now if you click on the pop out banner up there, I'll follow the link below the video, you can try out the car wag configurator on any car. In fact, you can head over to our site, carwire.com, to compare offers, deals, finance, and reviews on all sorts of new cars. The Discovery Sport is very easy to drive in town. You sit up high so you get a good view out. There's lots of glass. The only slight, slight problem is the rear window probably isn't quite as big as you think, but it's still fairly easy to park because you've got all those driving aids to help you out. Also, the turning circle is actually quite good, so it's easy to do a U-turn if you need to. The suspension is soft enough over bumps and generally it's quite relaxing. The gearbox just blends the gears together pretty well. Where it's not so good, this gearbox, is when you floor it, it has to hesitate a bit and then it takes off. It's better than it was before, but sometimes it holds onto its gear for too long and it's not the best automatic gearbox. Also, the engines, they just don't feel as powerful as you think they're going to be given their horsepower figure. This 180, feels more like 150 horsepower. And then there's the economy. It's a diesel, two litre. I'm expecting good things, but I'm not getting it. I'm getting 31 miles per gallon, which is not great. I can't complain so much about comfort levels when you're on the motorway. It's actually quite nice. You do get a bit of tire noise if you're really listening for it, but it's not too bad. And the seats, they are good for long distance journeys. What is a bit surprising about this car is that it's actually pretty decent on a twisty road as well. It grips well enough because of the four wheel drive system. It doesn't lean too much in the bends for a tour car, but it doesn't have the element of sportiness that you get with something like a BMW X3. In fact, if that's your thing, click on the pop out banner up there to watch my detailed review of the BMW. So then, what's my final verdict on the Land Rover Discovery Sport? Should you bleh, avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist it. The extensive revisions to the car have made it quite a bit better than before. Now, some of you watching this video might go, why haven't you guys cleaned this blooming car? It's very lazy. Well, we had, and then we drove it about 200 meters to our filming location here and it's covered in dirt again. So for the next three or four months, you're gonna to have to put up with dirty cars. Yeah, okay. Anyway, if you wanna watch more videos, they're down below and click there to check out the best offers on a Discovery Sport. That's enough.